everyone, you are watching SNN 5, your school news in 5 minutes. Today is January 22nd, 2021. Let's talk about inaugurations. In today's show, we want to review some unique details about inaugurations in the past. For example, did you know that one president died a few weeks after his inauguration? Also, there's one president in the 20th century who was the last to wear a top hat, another gave the shortest speech, and another gave the longest. We have all the fun, unusual, and little-known facts about inaugurations. Plus, we also have an update about special and famous pets in the White House. All coming up on today's SNN 5. Thanks for joining us today. On with the show. Let's talk about the inaugural address. The shortest speech was so short that if you turned it in to a teacher, you'd likely have had it handed back with the words, make it longer. Go to Google Docs and write up 135 words. That's the length of the shortest inaugural address. According to Convert Words to Speech, it takes about one minute to read 125 words. George Washington gets the prize for the shortest speech in his second inaugural address. My segment is under 100 words, so yeah, short. Next up, who had the longest? If George Washington was a man of few words, then William Henry Harrison, who served as the ninth president of the United States, didn't know when to stop. In 1841, number nine has a few unusual distinctions to his presidency. First, he spoke the longest speech ever, delivering a speech with over 8,000 words, which took a little over two hours. Plus, it was freezing cold, and he didn't wear a coat, hat, or gloves. So guess what? He got really sick. So sick that William Henry Harrison died of typhoid, or pneumonia, or paratyphoid fever, only 31 days into his term. Becoming the first president to die in office and the shortest-serving U.S. president in history, who also happened to give the longest speech. Got a top hat? It's one of these. Top hats were the traditional fashionable headwear of choice for many presidential inaugurations. Number 35 president, John F. Kennedy, was the last to wear a top hat in 1961. However, JFK was the first to add a poet to his inaugurational events. The poet was a man by the name of Robert Frost, who was 86 at the time. He was trying to read his poem. There was some bad light which produced a glare on the page, so he couldn't continue. Instead, he recited his poem, The Gift Outright, which he knew by heart. That was the first poem reading in an inauguration. How about some presidential pets? The Delaware Humane Association hosted a fundraiser party over Zoom last weekend to honor Major. This is Major. What did they call it? Well, pun alert, the in dog duration. Major is the first shelter animal to make it to the White House. The Bidens have two dogs, Major and Champ. They're both German Shepherds, by the way. Major was part of a very sick litter of puppies, but he survived. The Bidens adopted him in 2018. Major's story is encouraging more shelter adoptions. Want to know more about presidential pets? Well... Here's the link, I mean, link below for you to learn more about presidential pets. There's an oath of office, you know. The presidential oath of office is in the Constitution. It says, I do solemnly swear that or affirm that I will execute the office of president of the United States and will do the best of my ability to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Each president must recite the oath of office, which has t been taken 72 times before and by 45 presidents of the United States who have became before Joe Biden. And there is a wonderful first in this 2021 inauguration. Our vice president is the daughter of an Indian mother and a Jamaican father, and she has risen higher than any other woman in this country has ever came before her. She will be our first woman vice president the first African-American vice president, and the first South Asian American to hold the office. We hope you enjoyed some of these facts about the inauguration.
Now for some Skyridge details. From our last show, we talked about joining the Skyridge Builders Club, which is focused on service learning projects. Builders Club is the largest service organization for middle school students. It's easy to join and to be part of something big and do good deeds. The Google Classroom code is in the description. Also, our Skyridge Memory Book team has some photo themes coming up. Next week is the start of the first theme. The theme for next week is as easy as putting on your mask and taking a picture. The theme is Skyridge students wearing their mask. We'll give you the Flipgrid link for that in the description too. Let's help them out and get those pictures submitted with either Google Form or Flipgrid. Our thought of the day is from Mark Twain. The secret to getting ahead is getting started. It's a three-day weekend for us. Yay! February 1st, a week from Monday, Skyhawks will start to go back to the place, the school. In the next week, we'll have a show to talk more about expectations and what that really looks like, so stay tuned. As for now, follow the Sky Code, which means be safe, be respectful, be responsible, and be kind. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you again soon.